What's going on, everybody? Today's show, the top 10 tips and tricks. We do it every year. This is our rendition for 2019. Jason gets hot and heavy with the way that he titles these things. Stick around. Hey, Foot Clan, did you know that Spotify can be used in your car? Get all your favorite music now on the road with you and all your favorite podcasts as well. No need to switch between apps. Your Daily Drive is a brand new playlist, a mix of music and news made just for you. It's the best thing to happen to cars since the stereo. Take Spotify for a ride in your car today. Learn more at Spotify.com slash drive. Uh, this is D.D. Westbrook here with the Jacksonville Jaguars, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, Dee Dee. Dee 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 Dee. Welcome in. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers, Thursday, August 15th. We had a bit of a moment right before the show. This is Andy, Mike, and Jason. Many moments. What moment are you referring to? We did have many moments, Mike. But I'm referring to the one where we all found out we have the same crush on the same girl in the same class. Mm. Although we already knew Mike had a crush on her. Like, and been, I've, we've been hanging out for months. Well, we, we, Andy and I knew that you've got a thing for her. But apparently both Andy and myself separately have... Kind of All right, drop like, the analogy. <laughs> yeah, the analogy needs to go. But before the show, we were just saying how excited we are for Dee Dee Westbrook. Yeah. Just, Welcome to Team Dee Dee. It's a great place. I don't think I was ever not on his team. You but know, you were definitely taking fan club phone calls for him. Well, someone's got to do it. For me, it was a Marquise Lee thing. Like early in the off season, mm -hmm. when I statted guys out, the the expectation from the Jaguars, the expectation from just the you know the injury timeline, Marquise Lee was going to be a big part, and I thought maybe he'd even be the number one or at least compete to where there is no solid value at wide receiver for a team that doesn't project to throw that much. But now with the pace that he's been getting back, Didi just looks locked into that number one role, and he's very cheap. Yeah, yeah, so we all, yeah, he may find his way into the breakout oh. category. Whoa, we're, we're already there? Of the ultimate this draft This is kit. a, what a day. Maybe a value. What a day for Team uh, The Didi. value category. We haven't discussed this other than right before the show, so we'll see. Um, today is one of my favorite episodes that we do every year. It's 10 tips and tricks to help you win your league. One of the things that when we started this podcast, we wanted to do was kind of go, you know, we want to be accurate with all of our player analysis, player projections. I think we've proven that over the past several years, which probably annoys people that don't <laughs> like dad jokes. I think that would be fair, right? And, but, but we've had a lot of success being accurate with the player projections, but I, I enjoy the discussions that go beyond the player projections into ways that help, you know, the intangible factors that help you win your fantasy league. Right. And this show's all about those intangible factors. How do you go beyond just projecting players to uh, being a smart fantasy football owner and commissioner and player week to week? What are some of the tips and tricks, the professional type of uh, hacks, right? that we can do to give ourselves an advantage on a weekly basis. People love life hacks. Yeah. And they like uh, top lists. Mike. Yes. Top lists. Very, very astute enunciation. Well so, pronounced. 10 to 1. We're going 10 to 1 today. We may or may not have had a problem with that, <laughs> with that, in, the, that in the past. That enunciation <laughs> there. Yes. So we're doing a top 10 list today. Red leather, yellow leather. Thank you. 10 tips and tricks to help you win your league. Uh, if we have time, we'll get into some mailbag. Reminder before we get into the quick question, because we got preseason games tonight, so that's what the quick question is about. But you can follow us on Twitter, at the FF Ballers, the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. I got to give a shout out to uh, Kyle, our editor in chief. Oh, the Borgogan. Just broke a brand new article, Vacated Targets and Predicting the Future in Fantasy Football. You know me, I'm all about predicting the future. This article is great. He looks at the last several years. 
teams that had vacated targets, it's a very common phrase that we bring up. Players, you know, uh, the Raiders, right? You, you lose different receivers or, or weapons, and they have all these vacated targets. What happens next? Do teams automatically fill those vacated targets with wide receivers? He makes some different conclusions in this article pointing to the running back position. So teams with vacated targets lately, in years past, they tend to look to running back. So that's insightful. That's something that might inform your decisions when we all want to do the same thing. We all want to say the best player leaves, so uh, Corey Coleman is going to stand up and be the one for Cleveland. Terrell Pryor left for Washington. Corey Coleman is the guy. Doesn't always work out that way. Hard to be a number one. Yes. Hard to step into that role. Hard to be Corey Coleman. Let's be honest. It's, <laughs> it's been rough. It's, it's not been an easy ride for him. You are correct. <laughs> uh, you can uh, leave us a rating, a review on Apple Podcasts. We appreciate that. You can check out the community at jointhefoot.com. Just made the announcement yesterday on the massive Megala Bowl tournament. Uh, you have responded. Yes. There are many Foot Clan. You better bring it. That are competing in this uh, massive tournament which if you're a supporter at jointhefoot.com, you can enter it. You can win a listener league spot and an invitation to come hang out with us. Here's the quick question. Tonight we got five games on the docket preseason week two. I'm super excited because I think I'm going to see players a little bit longer than I did last week. Yeah, We know that's the case like in Arizona. Uh, Cliff Kingsbury said Kyler Murray's going to see a little more time tonight. <laughs> take it easy, All Jason. Right, take it Don't easy. mind me. Don't mind me. Just a little excited. Also, <laughs> nice jersey, Andy. Yeah, I put on my Kyler jersey today. I'm a little hyped. Deal with it. So what are you looking forward to tonight in the games this evening? What are you looking at? Uh, what conclusions are you looking to draw? I'll talk jump up, in talk here. Talk about tonight. I will jump in. I'm excited to watch the Jets' offense, not just because Robbie Anderson is one of my guys, but – they looked sharp. It was like all the all the teams. It was it was very quick. Just seeing the first team offense out there, but Sam Darnold, after the shaky start, he looked very sharp, and he went a lot to Jamison Crowder. So I want to see if that if that connection continues to build and they develop that chemistry and just get that. Is Sam Darnold looking like he's taking that second year step? Can I? Uh ask you a question about sure. that team and where you're at with them right now because every year I put out a uh, shamelessly bold prediction article. Almost done with it. It'll be out soon. These are not just hot takes. These are hot, hot, scalding. Hot takes. Scalding ridiculous. But you're I'm the Jets winning having, the division. I'm having trouble with the Jets. Oh. Because Jamison Crowder, I, I believe the refrain every offseason contractually, we're all required to think he can catch 100 passes. Yeah, That's just yeah. people, no matter what team he's on, no matter what's going on, Jamison Crowder might catch 100 passes. But reports out of camp right now, Quincy Anunua. Jamison Crowder might catch no, 100 that, passes. That, that's true. But Quincy Anunua, looking great, right. back from his injury scare. He showed out when he had an opportunity before the injury last year. So where are you with the non-Robbie Anderson receivers? Because I believe in Sam Darnold taking a step forward. But is it Anunua? Is it Crowder? Is it Quincy? Is it Herndon? Uh, Nunwa is Quincy, but yes. Sure. <laughs> but he, he took your name and he used the first one, but he's right. He but then it, he worked but, in a tight end. But maybe it's Jamison. Super, super confused now. Uh, uh, Lev Bell, uh, but yes, Herndon coming back after the suspension. No, what, uh, what about Chris? <laughs> <laughs> I can do this all day, gentlemen. You're um, <laughs> so helpful. Uh, not very confident, at least at this point. That I, I want the guy who can hit the big play and, according to reports, will be used more underneath. We're going to get some easier targets for Robbie Anderson as well. So right now, because you're right, Anuma did show out, and then he got moved into a different part of the scheme. Granted, that was last year's scheme. This is a new new offense. But he got moved into a different part of the offense, and he pulled a Houdini. He just absolutely vanished. So I'm I'm not... I'm not buying into them for fantasy value just yet. I don't I don't think they're going to use Robbie Anderson underneath. I love Robbie Anderson. I don't know why you would do that. Jamison Crowder, Quincy and Nunwa have, you know, I just don't get it. I don't get why you wouldn't use him to take the top off the defense more often than not. I think they just mean instead of only running him on the deep, running him on the posts, 
get him more involved. Get him get some slants. Cause Touches. If, if Robbie Anderson can get involved in in the slant game with a big uptick, he's going to have those Odell Beckham plays where he the the DB was was too close. He breaks that one tackle and Robbie Anderson's gone. All right, Jason, what are your thoughts for tonight? Yeah, for tonight specifically, I'm looking at Miles Sanders because this weekend as a whole, I had mentioned it last week, I really want to see the rookie running backs and how they fare against first-team defenses. It really seemed like across the board, uh, you know, Miles Sanders, M David Montgomery, you had um, Justice Hill, a lot of guys. Devin that, Singletary. Devin Singletary, mm. a lot of guys that showed out. But across the board, they were all against second-team at best uh, defenses. Now we're into week two. First of all, I want to see if any of them get the first touch in the game. You know, does does David right. Montgomery get it, or are they still going? You know, hey, uh, Mike Davis, Mike Davis, you, the vet, the honorary vet touch. You still get it because it's preseason. Um, but yeah, so as far as tonight, I'm I'm looking at the Eagles' offense, watching Miles Sanders and Jordan Howard, seeing how they're splitting that up, and uh, and and how Miles Sanders does against a, a hopefully if it's the first team Jaguars defense, a very good defense. All right. Um, I want to, I want to see what happens in Baltimore. They got the game against the Packers tonight. Starts with L Lamar Jackson, who got, I, I was surprised he took as many series as he did last week. They, you know, he kind of had some short series, so they put him back out there, but he, he threw the ball, um, quite a bit. I want to see how Lamar Jackson looks throwing the football again tonight. He's one of those players that I think may end up at the end of the year, one of the biggest steals in, in fantasy he football. He certainly could, yes. But he does need to make a step he needs to take a step forward throwing the football last year he was a 58 percent passer it's not good enough and when we look at Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson and we project them taking a step forward throwing the football part of that is do they have the weapons to do that are they going to have the players around them is Miles Boykin able to be a contributor to the offense what does he look like tonight because his range of outcomes goes from being the number one target in the offense to ancillary and unnecessary is Chris Moore going to play a role? Is Marquise Brown going to get back, get healthy, and help Lamar Jackson um, by you know five or six deep touchdowns this year? What is Justice Hill, another one of those rookie running backs? Will they utilize him in the passing game? You talk about vacated targets on the offense. Does Justice Hill fill that role for Baltimore this year? So these are some of the things. I, I want to see what the Baltimore offense looks like because right now I think they can win the division. But oh, yeah, I don't I think, think yeah, they, they can. can I don't think they can do that without Lamar Jackson taking at least um, a step forward in the passing game. So excited to take a look at that. Let's uh, jump into the news. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. All right, I'm I'm getting fatigued with the unknowns. In do in, tell. Andrew Luck, Melvin Gordon, Ezekiel Elliott. Ah, yes. But because, this is our job. <laughs> well, it's every year. It is our job. But it's it's hard because it's not. There's not always new information. That's the, that's the issue. Like Melvin Gordon, the saga continues. There's no information. We need to talk about it. Make sure everyone's aware. But it's really difficult when it's like it's all continual speculation. Yeah, and, Tony Romo. Do you want to comment, Tony? Why don't you comment on Ezekiel Elliott situation? It's a coin flip. So, I would imagine Tony's dialed in. He thinks it's a coin flip. Maybe. So, I'm fatigued in the fact that I can't prescribe a true answer for Ezekiel Elliott. We don't know some things. We, It's all about risk mitigation for the fantasy owner. Do you want to even take the risk? Do you want to blacklist um, the, the Andrew Lux of the world? That's kind of up to you. Right now, Frank Reich came out. He said he wants to make a call on the team starting quarterback for week one following the third preseason game. All we know about Andrew Luck is that they want to rehab this injury, that he's probably not going to be 100% if he plays. This statement is is funny to me because, Frank Reich, you are telling me that after the third preseason game, if Andrew Luck is not ready, you're going to say, okay, Jacoby Brissett is our starter for week one, and then Andrew Luck looks like Charlie from the Mighty Ducks who returns from his injury and says, I woke up and it doesn't hurt anymore. And you go, nah, man. We're going to stick with Jacoby. I mean, well, there's a reason. It'll be the night before the game, and you're going to say, oh, Andrew, you can play? Great. You're the quarterback But now. the reason he's saying it now before preseason week two is clearly, I mean, the only reason to say it now is to send a message to Luck. 
I mean, to say, look, I want to name this soon. I, I mean, I would imagine there's a little bit of frustration. Remember, this injury happened a long time ago, and they came into camp, and once training camp started, day one, he was in a, uh, you know, he was off to the side. Day two, he was on the field. Luck got back. So they thought the timeline was over, and then he was out again. So I think there's frustration going on here, and to me, luck is off my board, or at least down in the double-digit rounds. I'm and and like I said, pairing with another quarterback because I don't, I don't want to trust right now uh, that situation, and I I'm pretty much avoiding most of the Colts receivers. T. Y. Hilton, who's looked like a great value, now scares me. Uh, you know, we we've kind of not been bullish on Eric Ebron already, and if you don't have luck, that's even worse. Paris Campbell is a rookie. I'm 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 avoiding the Colts if it's pricey. And I don't, I don't get the impression that he's frustrated with Andrew Luck myself. Like I don't, I don't jump to that conclusion. But all the peripheral weapons, like T.Y. Hilton, will still be valuable. People, like yes, the the high end ceiling, maybe that doesn't happen. But he had games with Jacoby Brissett last year while injured, where he still was a top receiver. They came few and far between, but it still happened. Yeah, either the consistency but, goes down. But Funchess, uh, all the tight ends, Paris Campbell, all the all the outlook, even the the Marlon running Mack. backs. It just gets so un yep. murky. Odell Beckham Jr. is dealing with a hip injury. Jason, are you worried? Um, yeah, I am. I'm going to actually talk about this in a little bit. I'm not worried like, oh, he's he's not he's going to miss games. Um, and I'll explain my worry a little bit later in one of the tips. But it's just it's just a reminder that I I do think Odell Beckham carries risk that we don't necessarily apply to him in general. Um. Amari Cooper dealing with a ligament issue in the foot, unlikely to participate in the preseason. Matthew Betts, our injury expert from the Ultimate Draft Kit, he believes his week one status is in jeopardy. Uh, we don't know how bad this is. The team doesn't seem to have that level of concern. It was initially reported as a plantar fascia irritation. Uh, now it's being called a ligament injury. We just need to pay attention to it. But his risk rating's going up for me today. Yes. Um, maybe some – we talked about the Cowboys' early season schedule. Those three games look real nice. Michael Gallup might be able to start Michael Gallup in week one, week two. Could be a sneaky late-round guy that you could start if you go heavy running back. Jeff Howe of The Athletic reports Damian Harris is battling a minor hand and wrist injury. Seems like that would explain why he's not getting – any more reps, or at least you know, like it came out. They're barely giving Damian Harris any touches. Well, they're going to let him get healthy. Nikhil Harry returned to practice. George Kittle is day to day with calf tightness. That's about all I got for news, guys. Great. Dude. Let's get to it. All right. As a reminder, grab the Sleeper app, the best, most flexible platform for the modern fantasy football player. Download the Sleeper app. Get your league over there today. Before we get into the rest of the show, today's podcast is brought to you by ADT. Real protection from ADT is personalized smart home security with a system that fits your unique needs. It's the latest innovation in smart home security from ADT with everything from HD video doorbells, high def indoor and outdoor cameras, smart locks, lights to smart thermostats all controlled from the ADT app or the sound of your voice. But real protection doesn't stop there. Take ADT peace of mind with you on the go with the ADT Go app. It features location sharing, safe driving reports, and an emergency SOS button. Real Protection is a team of professionals who help safeguard your home with rapid connection to first responders 24-7. That's how ADT, the nation's number one smart home security provider, helps keep your home and your family safe wherever you go. That's Real Protection. That's ADT. To learn more, visit ADT.com slash podcast. Support for today's show also comes from NFL Game Pass. We've been talking about the preseason. This is how we watch the preseason. Only with NFL Game Pass do you get every out-of-market preseason game live. Are the Browns going to be a playoff contender? Do the Cowboys got all those pieces? Are the Jets what we hope they might be able to be? With NFL Game Pass, your season can start right now. Uh, I'm excited, like I said, to watch the the Ravens offense tonight. Jason is excited to tune in to all of these rookies. It was neat to see Devin Singletary get some time last week. You can watch through each and every play of these guys. Do they pass the eye test with NFL Game Pass? Make sure you see all the action this preseason with NFL Game Pass, and you can kick off the season 
with a seven-day free trial when you sign up right now at NFL.com slash fantasy footballers. That is NFL.com slash fantasy footballers. It's time for the tips and tricks. Tips and tricks. <laughs> can I, before we start the countdown, can I throw like a bonus tip that I just learned? Oh, please. Number 11. Apparently, you don't want to be on our wall in the studio. Because I'm looking at, I'm looking behind you, Jason. Melvin Gordon's sitting down there to your, to your right. Oh, okay. no. All right. And then I'm looking above your head. Mm-hmm. And Andrew Luck's up above your head. Oh, no. And so... Hopkins jersey's on the wall, everybody. Oh, don't. Now, don't go there. You're, you're, the Reaper's the one that brought it up. He's fine. He's fine, everybody. I got Julio behind me. He's coming back off the foot injury. He's so fine. Good. So our wall is recovering. Everything is fine. There's nothing to see here. <laughs> don't panic. All right, let's get into the top 10 tips and tricks for 2019. Number 10. All right, number 10. I'm going to kick it off. Running back depth looks stupid until it doesn't. Mm. That's tip number 10. You remember this offseason when the San Francisco 49ers signed Tevin Coleman? Uh, when they already had Jarek McKinnon and Matt Breida and Jeff Wilson My Jr. Name is Jeff. And Raheem Mostert. They looked pretty uh, silly, right? A lot of jokes, comments made about how big the running back room looks. They signed another running back, spent money on him. It was a surprise, right? Nobody expected Tevin Coleman to go to San Francisco. Except running back depth only looks stupid until it doesn't. Things change very, very quickly for fantasy football owners and in real life for the running back room. Look at them now. Imagine if Tevin Coleman hadn't been signed by San Francisco. We'd be sitting here going, okay, Matt Breed is a starter. Jeff Wilson just got banged up. So let's translate this to fantasy football. We had an article on the website looking at an injury history of round one running backs in fantasy football drafts. How, what is the injury risk in the first round? Even when, well, I love going running back in the first round, right? Yeah. Well, the, the top end running backs who are going to carry the ball 200 to 250 times and then get the 50 plus targets. I mean, that's a huge difference. That's two players in one position. And one of the reasons we love late round quarterback drafting is because it affords you the ability to build depth at the position. Stack, Mike, you've done this uh, better than any of us in recent years in all of our leagues, where you just kind of you just kind of just add another running back, add another running back. Oh, that just, name doesn't look relevant. You, look, you you get as many scratchers as you can. You right. don't go to the gas station and buy. Oh, well, one. This is it. This is the golden ticket. Yeah, yeah. you're not you're not Charlie. Yeah, <laughs> no one's Charlie. Yeah, only Charlie's Charlie. Uh, a jerk in 2018 owning a chocolate factory. <laughs> <laughs> for free <laughs> he didn't have to do nothing speaking of nothing what, what's going on with those grandparents get out of bed is it, the grandparents just slept yeah uh, yeah okay mm -hmm. look uh, i could do an entire podcast i know you charlie could. i know you could to. let's digress in 2018 33 percent of running backs taken around one missed time due to injury they missed 14 games in 2017 uh, of the six running backs taken in the first round two running backs were injured 33 percent in 2016, 33% of running backs drafted in the first round were injured. They missed 15 games. You go back to 2015, that was a bad year for running backs. 83% of running backs taken in the first round suffered an injury. That's They missed 32 games. That's when the following draft season, it was the first round was in like entirely wide receivers. Those yeah. People were mad. So over that four-year sample, there were 12 injuries to running backs selected in the first round out of a possible 27 players. That's a 44% injury rate. All this to say, you can't predict injury. You don't know when a guy's going down. You don't know what's going to happen. So depth is valuable once you need it. It's not valuable in the beginning when you look like, oh, man, I should have invested this pick on uh, a top tight end. It will become valuable. And suddenly the late round additions of guys like Justin Jackson, Jalen Samuels, who fits the category, by the way, vacated targets in Pittsburgh, may see some Jalen Samuels action. Darwin Thompson, who I'm rising on in Kansas City. Jamal Williams, whose name has not been uttered aloud yeah. all offseason. Well, it's the part where we said he's been hurt. Yeah, along with Aaron Jones. You know, um, Deion Lewis, again, last year, we were in the office yesterday. 59 receptions, I think, last season? Not mentioned. 
So those names, those guys, those late round flyers at running back, they start to become relevant. You need them. They're hard to come by on the waiver wire. Uh, injury, workload, fumble problems can get running backs binged. So don't feel stupid when you add the depth to your team. Feel smart. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, I like in the later rounds. I like I prefer to take my shots on just padding running backs instead of these wide receivers who may now become my wide receiver three. All right, Jason, you are up. We'll go ahead and uh, we'll push this button. Number nine. Number nine is a history of rookies by Batilda Bagshot. <laughs> okay, that is a shout out to all my Harry Potter lovers out there. You know what it means. All right. Here's the deal. I'm glad somebody does. Oh, the people know. The people know. They're they're excellent. Like, it was a great joke. Um, here's the deal. We need to utilize the 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 extravagant amount of data we have on the history of rookies in fantasy football because it's a it's it's pretty telling, right? Like not every position. We, we I said this I believe on yesterday's episode about tight ends, rookie tight ends. They don't really hit. And the reason we say that is not just because it happened last year, right? Like, you you brought up, Mike, that, that year when 83% of the round one rookies, they got injured. The next year, it was all wide receivers. Fantasy football tends to overreact based on what happened too recently. So you need to look a little bit wider, a little bit deeper, and take a look at the history. And I've got the data for you. I'll make it really easy. So here's your tip. All don't, right, Bethilda. Don't, break it down. Yes, I am Bethilda Bagshot. Don't draft rookie tight ends. Okay, in the last seven years, here's the list of rookie tight ends who finished first. Dwayne Allen, he was the best rookie that year. Of the the rookie class. Okay. Dwayne Allen, tight end 24. Jordan Reed, there's a name we know, but he was the 21st tight end. Mm. That's not good. Jace Amaro. Mm, Oh, I remember when that. Yes. How about Will Ty? He was great. The only one the that blast has, from the past. The I'm only enjoying myself. Rookie tight end who has who has actually mattered in the last seven years and and if well further back than that is Evan Ingram. We brought him up and he had a lot of things that happened, including Odell Beckham going down that allowed him to succeed there. So all the hype. I mean, you look at ADP lists and and T.J. Hawkinson is being drafted and he's being hyped up. He's going to be on the field. I'm not buying in because of what Batilda says about the history of tight ends. <laughs> Let's look at wide receivers. Another group that I am not really buying into because of history. Now, I looked at how many uh, – what I wanted to find out, really, when I looked into the data and I was uh, prepping for this show, I wanted to see how often rookies actually break out because that's really what you're going for. You're going for that rookie, that Odell Beckham, right, breaks out and is a wide receiver one. How many wide receiver ones? How many tight end ones? How many running back ones? In the last seven years, there have been three wide receivers that have broken out and become a wide receiver one. You had Odell Beckham and Mike Evans in 2014 and Michael Thomas in 2016. Outside of that, even great names like last year, Calvin Ridley had 10 touchdowns. He was the wide receiver 20. He was the best wide receiver last year. He didn't actually help people in fantasy because you didn't play him that week. He got three touchdowns. You know, it just that's how rookies happen, or or uh, DJ Moore, who had a good stretch, and Dante Pettis, who had a good stretch, they they were later in the season. So really, you're talking about over the last seven years, 0.4 r- rookies have been able to end as a wide receiver one. But look at running backs. I had someone uh, write in recently saying that they they don't like to draft rookie running backs, and I think that that's bad strategy. Literally, you know, I, I talked about Michael Thomas, Odell Beckham, Mike Evans. That's the end of the list for wide receivers. Here's the list in the last seven years of running backs who have finished their rookie season as a as an RB1. Philip Lindsay, Saquon Barkley, Kareem Hunt, Alvin Kamara, Leonard Fournette, Ezekiel Elliott, Jordan Howard, Todd Gurley, David Johnson, Jeremy Hill, Eddie Lacy, Doug Martin, Alfred Morris, Trent Richardson. They average almost two and a quarter rookie running backs every year on average are in the top 12. So when you take your shot at David Montgomery and Josh Jacobs and Miles Sanders, their AD, they crush where their ADP was when you get that shot. So if you combine these first two tips, which is loading up on running backs and taking rookies, take that shotgun approach, I think you're going to be good. And when it comes to quarterbacks, there's there's not been that many 
who have finished as a wide receiver one in the last seven years, which was the data I was going through, but they usually run. Robert Griffin, Russell Wilson, Dak Prescott, they run the ball. So and and, and like Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson. They didn't finish as a as a one, but that's because they didn't play half the year. Right. They dominated they when would they have. did play and they would have finished number one. That's why Kyler Murray's getting all the love. So when it comes to rookies, the history of rookies says draft rookie running backs, draft rushing quarterback rookies, avoid the other rookies. Thank you, Professor. You're welcome. I number feel, eight. <laughs> sorry. I was gonna say the my my tip here is is now will seem not as as strong because my monologue won't go on for twenty minutes. Oh, well, that was well done, Jason. Sorry, my apologies. No, no, for I'm nothing. Saying, I'm saying it was great. Oh, all right, good. But mine does kind of combo in with the other two tips we have gotten. There, uh, as the great philosopher J. G. Wentworth says. Oh gosh, <laughs> it's my money, and I want it now. <laughs> And what I'm off to a good start, Mike. I'll be honest. <laughs> We've got Bethilda Bagshot and JG Wentworth bringing you the fantasy Look, knowledge you need. We now. bring the deep cuts to win. On, on the fantasy footballers. And what I mean by that, I'm feeling so. <laughs> you, are you diving deep now to no, find I'm, a good one? I'm great now. Is the guys I'm taking late in the draft, I want to know immediately does it look like they have a path to value? And it, it's especially strong for running backs because guys like Peyton Barber going extremely late in drafts, you're going to know, at least for, for a chunk of the season, you're going to know week one, is Peyton Barber the guy or are they going to try and force it to be Ronald Jones? If it's Peyton Barber, you're going to have a nice value. Uh, the offense should improve. Bruce Arians has done magical things with his running backs. And now you have a nice value with Peyton Barber. Same with Matt Burita. Is, what's that split going to look like between Tevin Coleman and Burita? Is it close to Burita's getting 40%, but he's a, he's, a, he's hugely involved in the passing game? Devin Singletary, what happens to LaShawn McCoy and Frank Gore in front of him? Justin Jackson. If Melvin Gordon is holding out, Justin Jackson should provide value early. And on top of that, I'm not looking that uh, – it would be great if these guys turn into season-long values – but I'm trying to get my team off to a hot start, and I want to know who can help my team right now. And they, you know what? They also help. They help if they do nothing because now I know I got the easy cut. It's it's not a problem. I don't see a path uh, early on in the season that these people are going to provide value, unlike like John Brown. If John Brown comes out and has a bad week one, he – it, it could just be the factors of the game. I still got to hold on to John Brown and find out. Do you feel like Devin Singletary fits that category of guys yes. you'll know in week one? Because I, I would imagine this season starts with Frank Gore getting all the veteran love, the pat I'm on saying, the booty. I'm drafting Devin Singletary because perhaps LaShawn McCoy gets – there's still the rumors that Shady McCoy is going to be traded before the season starts and then watching week one. It's not necessarily that, that Singletary puts up a huge fantasy performance – but I look at the snap counts. I look at the usage. Does it look like Devin Singletary is going to rise to the top of that depth chart quickly? That's what I'm. That's what I'm sure, talking sure. about. And I mean, like Golden Tate, you can draft him late. But now, okay, now I'm sitting on More this like player. Golden Weight. Uh, oh, 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 so good, Kobe. <laughs> oh, that was that was nice. It's just these wide receivers where you take them late, they have a bad week one. You don't know for sure that yes. they aren't going to be involved in next week's game. All playing. you know is that some unknown wide receiver will score three touchdowns in week one, be sitting on the waiver wire, and you'll be like, oh, man, do I drop John Brown to go grab Kirby it Mershowich? <laughs> I thought you were going to go with Kirby Puckett. <laughs> Darnell Anderson. Uh, Again, so I want to know right now, are you going to help my team for the first 25% of the season? And that's what I want with my late shots. I don't want someone to sit on my bench for six weeks to figure it out. No, that's a super important tip. I fully and wholeheartedly support J.J. Wentworth on that one. Number seven. All right. Number seven, your team is not good as you think it is. As good? Not as. Wait. <laughs> let me start over. Wait. Your team isn't as good as you think it is, also known as. Our grammar, not good my as My grammar, we ain't good, not well. 
Here's another way to say it, Mike. Don't smell your own farts. Oh, I know. Jason, I know you need that You need that I warning need that more advice. than most. I need that advice in my life. Fantasy owners, each and every year, we fall in love, especially with the roster you draft. You spend month after month after month preparing to draft that roster, and guess what? A lot of the times you think you drafted the best roster. I We're all guilty of it after draft night. You, oh, you, you just gla- you turn down the lights, <laughs> pull up the laptop, and you're just like, oh, yeah. Yeah, look what I did. And uh, you fall in love. You also might fall in love with players that they did nice things for you last year. They put up huge points. We have our my guys, our projected my guys. You've got your my guys. Sometimes they're guys that delivered for you last year, but they can cause us to have a biased view of your own team. And here's what I mean. We've been in so many leagues where owners think that all of their players are the best players and they're the – they have a, 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 a rose-colored view of their roster. No one else is as good. You turn down trade offers that make perfect sense for your team because you are only looking at your roster through the lens of their ce- every player's ceiling. You're not looking at reality. Here's the thing. You don't get to count last year's points toward, towards this season. If you own Phillip Lindsay, you don't get to look back to last year and say, guess what? I get those points this year. You don't get bonus points if you own the player's jersey, surprisingly. Mm. So if they're your favorite player, your hometown team, I'm wearing a Kyler (laughs) jersey right now. I don't get points for being a fan. Um, You don't get a head start in 2019 by holding on to last year. That's the point I'm saying. So you need to try your best to be objective as a fantasy owner. View each season through a fresh lens. Start fresh. Um, If... Something starts to go sideways from how you viewed a player all off season. Oh, I know this player is going to do X. You can be tempted to hang on to that for no reason. There may be no real reason to believe that that breakout pick you had or that late round flyer you took will ever break out three, four weeks into the season. Mike, you talked last tip about learning early in the season. The dumbest thing you can do is learn and then do nothing about it. Say, or, 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 Basically, put your head in the sand and say, "Ah, next week, next week, next week. Some of the best trades you can make are cashing in on that type of bias that another owner has about your players. You can sell that. If you know in two or three weeks that Peyton Barber, oh, he's not going to be the guy. He's not going to get the work. He's not going to get the passing work. You might be able to sell another owner on your league on what he did last year. You may be able to turn this tip in your favor. So, um, if he's not panning out early, don't project something onto them that isn't going to happen in the next few weeks. Stay water. Your team might not be as good as you think. <clears throat> Super team. Oh, I feel like Whoa. that was a dig at me. It was well, a body blow right at the very end. It wasn't really a dig. It was more of a reminder. More of a kick in the crotch. Mm. Look, your team last year was a super team. Shout out to the listener <laughs> who tried to get in the listener league by taking a nut kick. Good job. Oh, yeah, we didn't say that, huh? No, but... Uh, we saw it. We, we saw, saw it. It was funny. I've been waiting did, for someone to bring up the did he get, team. Did I mean, he get right into the you, listener no, league? No, no. He was he not chosen? So if you I get chosen, him. know that... <laughs> yeah. So we go. We do review everyone, and thank you so much for those listener league submissions. And then we've got our finalists, and then we rank them internally, and then we let the ranks fall where they fall. I rank Nutkick guy very high because he took... The, the reason being... Now, Jason, stay with me. It's because he took a huge... Punt, uh, like a kick to the nuts. Right. That, that was, was the real. The, my that's only, why I wanted to put him in. My only problem is is twofold. The the <laughs> the, the, the hold on. His Your only, only problem, problem is two problems. Two things. Okay. I, 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 well, I realize there was two <laughs> because <laughs> nice, nice it's pivot. either it's either number one. <laughs> this this fan this this man should it, it's just a video. We're not there. Mm. He should have been wearing wearing protection for sure. And I would have been. Oh, exactly, and he could have been, and, he, and he, that's the that's why there's two problems. He could have been, and we've been deceived, or he didn't, and he sh- and he's a he psycho, <laughs> and he's a psycho. Either way, you lose, uh, but it made us laugh. Yes, it did, and it almost got you in the league. All right, next tip, number six: no risk it, no biscuit, and biscuits can lead to diabetes. <laughs> That's my <laughs> title for tip what, six. What is happening on today's show? Can I pre- before you get into whatever unravel that sure. ridiculous title? Every year on this show, normally we do we each put in our tips 
and then we go through as a team mm -hmm. and we name these things. <laughs> <laughs> this year that didn't happen. Like we named them ourselves, and you're getting the results. You're welcome. So hold on. No risk, get no biscuit. Biscuits lead to diabetes. What on earth do you mean? I'm saying, look, I don't want diabetes in my first round. Maybe you do. <laughs> oh my but gosh. in my first round, I oh. want to avoid risk. I've said this for years. This is a tip I always bring up: is that early in the draft, avoid risk. There's no reason. There's no reason to go with the risky player, the player that has some big, he changed teams or he's got a big injury history or, you know, like everybody in the first round is good. Everybody there is a good player, has a chance to finish as, you know, near the number one in their position. So if you bypass on a risky player, you are saying no to diabetes is what I'm saying. Here's so the thing. You could go gluten-free in the first round. Is that what I'm hearing? That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Bruce Arian said no risk and no biscuit. I'm saying in the first round, maybe don't follow Bruce's advice. Here's my data to back me up. Let's look at these. Oh, but Zelda's stepping up to <laughs> the Batilda's microphone again. Look at the last two years. I'm, I looked at the first round of the last two Set years. Set your timers. No, it's I'm only going two years, not seven years, so we're okay. okay. Last year, who were the busts? Lev Bell was a bust, Okay. Obviously, biggest bust of the first round. He was dealing with a holdout. There was giant risk with him, but you took the risk and it failed. David Johnson, I don't think he was really a bust because he finishes the running back 10, but because it happened last year, everyone feels that way. But even him, he had a brand new team. He had a rookie quarterback. There was a lot of big variables there to David Johnson. Well, he was supposed to have Sam Bradford. Sure. Uh, okay. <laughs> That's not risky. Um, Kareem Hunt, there was nothing you could do about. Right, Kareem Hunt was great, and then something came out. His season was over, and you know that was a bust that you you couldn't see beforehand. You had Leonard Fournette, who has a giant history uh, in, of being injured, and then the only other bust in that first round was Odell Beckham. As far as where he finished, you could say, well, he was good until he got injured. Whatever, we'll talk about that in a second. Go back a year prior. You have David Johnson, nothing you could do about that, right? He got injured early in week one and was out. The other ones were, again, Odell Beckham, who has this history of being drafted in the first round and still dealing with injuries. And you had Jay Ajayi, who was on a bad team. So much of his stats came in like three games. We brought that risk up that year, very similar to Derrick Henry. So it's like, look at this year. Who are the risks? You've got Zeke. Maybe I'm not taking him at four. Because I, there's just wow. no reason to. You've got Lev Bell, changed teams, new everything, new offensive line, new scheme. Todd Gurley, who is still amazingly on some ADP lists in the in the first round. And you all right? Odell Beckham Jr., who, again, he has not only this history of injuries, but he has also changed teams, new quarterback. Uh, and these could be great. All four of those guys, Zeke, Lev Bell, Todd Gurley, OBJ, they could be dominant this year. But I'm saying as a tip, like, why take the risk when there are other there are other great options? I mean, Julio or Odell Beckham, you know, they're going right next to each other in drafts. That's, a, that's why. Julio, the, but Julio carries risk too. He carries the, the same. He, he not really. No, he's yeah, been play, no. he's played basically 16 he games has, for years and years. He has. I mean, he's been able to play through. But I'm just I saying. I would argue he's probably the least risky. Yeah, he's he's been. Uh, just look at his career finish well, and every let's year. Let's circle back to Zeke because I brought this up the other day. This whole thought of like he should be the fourth. You know, we say, oh, he'll be the fourth of that group. I don't know if I buy that because it's the same decision for any owner. Like, ooh, Zeke is sneaking to the seventh pick. Well, guess what? The person at the seventh pick gets one first round draft pick. It doesn't matter whether Zeke snuck to you to give you a, a screaming value. It sounds like you're talking about my next tip. All right, we'll get to that. Number five. Uh, but also, my biggest takeaway from Jason is he will not be drafting Wilford Brimley <laughs> in the first round. That's right. I don't like oatmeal. That's a deep cut. I like it. Thank you. That's what this show is all about. Uh, and my, my tip here is I just want to talk some game theory. I want to talk opportunity cost. That, that phrase does come up on this podcast from time to time. But when you take a player... It doesn't just cost that draft pick. It also costs what you didn't select. And you don't need to get into the paralysis by analysis of this. I just I want our listeners to start looking at fantasy football for what it is. It's it's a game. It's not just oh I w I watch football so I take the best players. Like there's there is an entire theory 
uh, that can help give you an edge in this game. The, this game is all probability. That's that's the game we are playing when you boil it down. And it's like if once once the uh, the simulation takes over and they're playing fantasy football, they'll be able to do it because it's just running probability numbers. So, for example, like Andy was just saying, if you take Zeke at number seven, what you're if maybe you're just staring down. Oh, I got the value. So th this has to happen. You also need to factor in. Well, okay, well if I don't if I take Zeke here, I don't have any more first round picks. So I can't take Devontae Adams here if I wanted to. He's not going to come back to me. So And how do you have to protect that risk of Zeke later in the draft? Does exact, it cost you two picks to take Zeke there? Exactly. So I'm I'm just wanting people to I'm, – I'm not going to dive into like a big monologue here about uh, going d deep into that game theory. I just want people to start wrapping your head around it's more than just I pick a guy. Like there is – there is I pick this guy – means I don't get to do this. And and this I mean oh, this quarter, is, quarterback, this is, early quarterback. That's the that's the the, exact. Whole, the 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 whole crux of the argument isn't that Pat Mahomes isn't going to be good. Pat Mahomes is going to be great. It's what are you giving up? And you're you're saying exactly. look, consider the cost, right? Yes. Consider the cost. Sit down and consider. That's a good title. Yeah. Uh I like that Jason had these very uh, convoluted titles. Mike didn't title his. It's just opportunity cost. Well, so whose are better, Andy? Uh, I want you to they, have to say that they mine. are both equally not well, as good as mine. Technically, Jason titled his, so his has to be better, right? Thank you, Mike. Oh, good. Number four. Number four, the title for number four is Memories of Now, which is a famous, uh, Brooks is nodding, Duke Silver album. Ah. Memories of of now Here's you should you should have gone with mem just started belting out memories from cats <laughs> i do not know that thankfully um ma'am you do you know you it. don't you don't know memories I, of my it's, it's, I got an app on my phone that will send an alarm if uh any cat songs are played within a square block he's allergic and i uh, run yeah I'm, I'm allergic i'm not a fan of the musical but memories is one of the the most famous show tunes of all time I then i probably have heard it mike are memories. you satisfied i don't want to hear it now here here's the here's the point with number four because you don't know where i'm going yet the power of now is what I want to get into. And again, I'm not go I don't have um, some huge monologue, but I want fantasy owners to remember something here. The best fantasy owners are the most active fantasy owners. And sometimes we underestimate the value of picking up a victory today versus building everything for the future weeks. Okay? So this doesn't mean that you're not wise and you don't plan ahead and you're not smart in your league because there are very there are ways that you can do that and we talk about them all season long. What it you know the, we talk about uh, you have a player that's already through their uh, uh, hasn't had a bye week and you trade for a player that's already had their bye week so you just picked up a week. Those are smart thought thoughts that you can have, plans that you can make for the future. Those are smart things to do. But there is a lot of value in the present week. I love spending my fab dollars on players early in the season when I think that they're going to make a difference to my team right there, right now, last year, need a tight end, $44 on George Kittle, done, no no remorse, no no disappointment. It, maybe it doesn't work out. But <laughs> there, was, there was a huge chance for, for great despair on that one. You can always, but it but worked out. You can always be wrong, but if you have the conviction that you need a player and they're sitting there, what I'm saying is don't be paralyzed by going, Boy, if I spend this money on a player I know will affect my team today, I'm not going to be able to spend it on a theoretical player that will be available in week seven. You might not have your team in a very good position in week seven. You know today you can get a player that makes a difference. I'm always trying to make trades in my leagues that benefit the, um, the upcoming week and the upcoming matchup. Sometimes if you don't have a powerhouse team, if you have a powerhouse team, it's a little easier to set it and forget it, right? You're not micromanaging each and every player if you're running out Last year, Mahomes, Gurley, Tyreek, Beckham, whatever. But a lot of the times you don't have a – you need to buy weeks. When we started this company, like a lot of startups have the same story. We were literally just trying to buy survival for another month, come up with a strategy to how do we get to the next month. That's what fantasy is like a lot of the time. Can I win this week? And then I'll figure out next week, next week. You make trades, you waiver wire pickups, play for now a little bit. 
It's no good spending all your fab dollars in week 10 if you're already out of the playoffs, is my point. So consider the future, but play for now. That's my tip. I actually really like that, and it's good advice for dynasty leagues as well where <clears throat> owners so often get so enamored with the future that they never are able to win the championship in any year that they're actually playing fantasy football, but they always look sweet down the line. And you kind of questioned yesterday when I said I made a dynasty trade with Hilton. Right. And it was like, what? It's a dynasty league. And Luck might miss a couple games. Well, my thought process with that is I'm not going out there trying to give Hilton away. I'm trying to trade Hilton for what I believe is a great value in return right now. And yes, maybe it buys me three or four weeks, but it should be a good trade regardless. So I'm thinking in the, in the now, but also in the future. I'm not selling. I'm not reacting, but I'm saying, well, if I got a great wide receiver back, if I could do a trade for Juju, I don't have to deal with Andrew Luck. That's, and, that's kind of the thought. And there is like there is a strong emotional value to one win. Like winning a week on uh, in fantasy football, not just I mean your mood. I mean we're, we're, we all <laughs> which it horribly affects. I'm saying your emotion to how you feel about that league and moving forward and trying to keep yourself engaged. It's it's amazing how you can be sitting three and zero. Like yeah, this is, and then you lose. You're three and one, which is still fantastic. The sky is falling. But your your team at three and one looks infinitely different to you than it did at three and zero. Oh. We've so, all made tilt trades. Oh, I was gonna say chasing. So, I'm 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 zero and two. I've got to do something. So there is a power to snatching of a, a victory away on a Sunday where you weren't expecting to. Absolutely. Number three. Number three, no clever title here, just something I like to say every single year because it is always true. You don't win the championship at the draft. Now, that's not to say the draft's not important. You set your foundation. You set your foundation the there. But I promise you, I used I, the reason I always bring this up is I used to be this player a decade ago. I would draft well, I would get I'd have a good team, and I would get to the playoffs and lose, or I would be the first team out of the playoffs year after year after year. And the reason why I didn't really understand is because I put so much emphasis on the draft, which was great, and then kind of abandoned it as it went along. And when I say it, I'm speaking of news. I'm speaking of uh, the, the the research and those type of things. That That's why we go year round here so that, you know, as you continue through the season, don't forget about all the stuff that changes. Here are a list of some of the most owned players in championship leagues this past season. Nick Chubb was not great in the beginning. You could get him off of waivers. I believe, Mike, you held him, dropped him, yep. had to pay for him off of waivers, right? Philip Lindsay, not a draft guy. Jalen Samuels was one of the most owned guys in championship leagues. Uh, Damian Williams, Derek Henry. These are players that were on the teams that won championships, and there's no way that those were guys coming out of the draft on all those rosters. The, this is a league. You, you brought it up, Mike. This is a game. It's game theory. And if you're going to cross the bubble from being a good team to the championship winning team, it's not what you do before the draft. It's what you do from weeks 1 through 16. 16, not 17, because we don't play championships in week 17. Foot Clan, um, and and those that guy who got kicked in the nuts might. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing: you got to keep with the waivers. You've got to pay attention to the news. You've got to make changes to your roster. Uh, you know, two years ago, my, my roster that I uh, won the championship against the loser Brian Ketrin uh, was I had one player that I drafted on that team, and uh, everything else was just clawing together players who can matter that week and and so if you want to get over the hump stick with fantasy fun news through the year stick with your waiver wires keep making transactions that's what puts you over the top to actually winning a championship and you want to keep the analogy going mike said look before you build the house you consider the cost the draft you're setting the foundation for the house that you're building but you got to stick with it each and every week that's why we Man, come listen to the show. We're here every single day. Help you build on that foundation. Mike, you're up. Number two. Running back targets uh, 
are incredibly important. All right. All right. And we we talk about that a lot, the, the value of the pass-catching running back, the difference that a workhorse running back makes when they do see that 50-plus target share. We've, we've, we've talked about that because a target is more valuable than a rush. And just to break that down real quickly – what do you expect? Like how many yards do you expect on a on a rush? A four point That's kind of the benchmark of that's a solid that's a solid average. That's a solid run. If you're only getting four yards on a reception, that's Ooh, that's bad. That's terrible. You're going to inherently get more yards, and then you get the PPR bump. So that's what we mean by a target is just more valuable than an actual attempt. Not only does it keep your running backs game script proof if they can be the pass catcher, but it's very important to the top end finish of these running backs. So last year, all of the top 10 had at least... Oh, gosh. At least... Oh! All of the top 10 running backs in half point had at least 55 targets. And you had some running backs that had incredible production. Chris Carson, 1,150 yards on the ground. Wow. Nine rushing touchdowns. Oh, good. Those are fantastic running end of season rushing numbers he was still 30 points out of the top 10 because he only had 24 targets last year Derrick Henry yes he saved some championship teams but on the season 1059 rushing yards 12 12 rushing touchdowns he was also about 30 points out of being in the top 10 because he only had 18 targets in 2017 there was only uh, of the top 10 guys who were not getting a ton of targets Fournette but Fournette still had 48, and then Zeke, who is – Zeke is the outlier. Zeke can be in the top five without the targets. There's always that one guy, and this it's Zeke right now. 2016, only Zeke and LeGarrette Blunt were, were the non-pass-catching running backs in the top ten. It took 18 touchdowns from LeGarrette Blunt to show up there. Running back targets are incredibly important. So when you are – when you're looking at Derrick Henry, who I'm not paying. I am not paying the ADP for Derrick Henry because he's not going to get the passing downs work. We brought the name of Deion Lewis, who's the ghost of Deion Lewis. For the ghost fantasy. still gets what, the 70 ghost. targets, Ooh. something like that. He's still going to be there to catch the ball because that's not Derrick Henry's job. So if, if you're when I'm taking the shots on those running backs in, that round, in the, those rounds, I want to know that they at least have the pass-catching skill set. And I'll, I'll piggyback for a moment. To circle back to that article I brought up at the beginning, teams are passing to running backs more. We also brought up the middling tight ends on yesterday's show, not getting as many targets. Teams passing to the running backs more. There are teams each and every year that change their philosophy to pass to the running back more as well. Carolina did it when McCaffrey arrived. Right. Right. Houston might do it this year with Duke Johnson's arrival. Teams can make that transformation. So if you can identify the team with the vacated targets and a pass catching running back, that hasn't passed, you know, they haven't done it before, there could be opportunities for value there because of the power of the target. Right, but but just because a guy hasn't done it before, that that's not the same as saying this player doesn't have a pass-catching skill set. Absolutely. Like, to me, we know that Derrick Henry doesn't have yeah, the, the pass-catching skill Chris Carson set. does. Right. He, he just, just has, wasn't involved that way, but like, the, the reports are that he might get involved, and we've seen him succeed. He caught everything that was thrown his way last year, yeah. All right, we'll get you out on this. Number one. Get your house in order. Get All the right. ultimate clean, draft kit. Clean, clean your room. Yeah, you, that, that's the number tip one number tip. number one. Get the ultimate, ultimate draft kit. UltimateDraftKit.com. Um, no, that's a wonderful tip, Jason. Thank you. That can be um, 1B. How about sure. that? I am, you, I'll allow it. Uh, but no, get your house in order. What do I mean by that? Whatever your league needs to be... Uh, more competitive, more fun, whatever settings have been broken for a handful of years that you just have been... This is how we've always done it. ...to change. So are there two owners in your league that are dragging down the league with their inactivity or playing benched uh, players on a week-to-week -week basis? So get the right owners in your league. Get the right settings for your league. Get the right platform. If you're not on the right platform, get the right tools so that you can enjoy the season, whether that's getting on Twitter, following beat reporters, following, uh, subscribing to podcasts, the ultimate draft kit, making sure you're up to date on news. Whatever you need to do, August 15th is a good time to figure that out. Yes, before the 
before you're back into it, going, oh, dang it, we did it again. Yeah, I, remember to look at you know fab settings. D does your league want to change to fab? Do you have that week seventeen championship where you you know let's move it to week sixteen? Uh, are you a standard league and you want to go to PPR or our preferred setting half PPR, which is the best setting? <laughs> Um, you know, it, it just, and, and the thing is, is all these leagues, I mean, there's a Harry Potter league out there that started on the footclanleagues.com and they do this, it's, it's gotta be a 400 page manual for how to be in this league. It's, it's unbelievable, but my mostly point is spells. Yes. It's mostly spells. Um, but the point is we say half point is our preferred, whatever your league wants is great, but talk about it and fix the things that are broken and stay up to date with the other people in your league that yeah, otherwise get a communication hub. thank you yeah that's a that's a huge one we always want to remind people whether it's slack or facebook or wherever the case may be find a central place um sleeper does a good job of yep. creating a central messaging area but just make sure you can communicate because that's how trades happen you know what i mean find a couple of drivers of, of conversation we this podcast started almost five years ago with Mike and I on our lunch breaks going into a room and recording a show for 12 people. It was great. And we were two of the 12. Yeah. Look, to your point, Andy, when you want to make deals, you got to be in the room where it happened. Okay. Yeah, I'm surprised we got to the end. I feel, I feel like because this show has been so silly, we should let everybody know you're coming in. Uh, last year, we did have all three of us in the top 20 in accuracy, two of us in the top 10. We are uh, historically accurate, and we know what we're talking about. But I say all that just because we've been exceptionally silly, and I want you to know we do know what we're talking about We take well. this seriously. We, we take it seriously, but we want to have fun. Well, that's what fantasy football is all about. That's why I say get your house in order. Get the right owners in there so you can enjoy the league. So that you got – you need the right people to gloat. Oh, oh yeah. yes. to, uh, If need... someone didn't pay any attention to the league and didn't make any transactions or whatever, I'm not gonna, what's up, man, in your face? <laughs> They're like, wait, what? what yeah. Am I in the what, league? What's in my face? I kid you not. I, I'll, I'll, I'll share this story. Someone at our church was trying to get a uh, fantasy football league going, and so they're sending out a text trying to invite people. And they're just sometimes you're scraping the barrel, right? You might not have enough interested people. Somebody replied, "I'll leave him nameless," and he said, "I'll play, but I'm not very good at fantasy, and I don't pay attention a lot. And I just trade my players to the team I think has the best chance to win the title." <laughs> and I said, uh, "You're out." <laughs> I said, "You should never play fantasy football, what? sir, dear sir." <laughs> what is so, what? We forget. I mean. Better to have an eight-team league without that they, that player than they, a ten-team league. Do they feel some win by association? I tr I traded you that player. I was that championship that. is mine. I too. will only join if I can collude for the victory of the better player. What do I, is do that? I, do, I, do I get my name on the plaque as well? <laughs> um, I love you, David. All right, oh, closing the show oh, out. Pristine get auction. Bodied. We want to thank our studio sponsor, a Keenan Allen signed Chargers jersey sold yesterday on Pristine Auction for $61. Use the registration code BALLERS at pristineauction.com. That's P-R-I-S-T-I-N-E auction.com. And definitely check out the Ultimate Draft Kit to get ready for your draft. You can find that at ultimatedraftkit.com. Until tomorrow, gentlemen. We will see you tomorrow, Foot Clan. Goodbye. for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.